Welcome to Clips, a quick review of facts or factoids taken from our more in-depth videos. Recently, we released a Minute of May starring the Belgian 1878 Nagant Revolver, the first of the Nagant Revolvers. Comments on that video led me to believe some of you didn't tune in for our massive primer episode on these particular handguns, because there was a lot of confusion between this and the much later 1895. So, let's do a quick comparison. All right, here is our Belgian 1878, and for scale, a Russian 1895. The 1895 is much smaller, much narrower in the grip, and they use a different cartridge. This particular guy is a 9.4 millimeter. This is a 7.62, and it's actually a gas seal system. So when we operate the gun, single action, and boom, double action. Ooh. There we go, slippy. This guy, single action. You see that cylinder go forward? Hmm. And oh, a little awkward upside down. Double action. Yeah, that cylinder went forward again. That's our gas seal, not present in this system. Otherwise, we also have very different mechanics. You may have noticed I just fired both of these for all intents and purposes. And look at the hammers. This one's all the way down. This one's actually rebounded itself. That's because internally, these are quite different. The 1878 uses actually a number of innovations from different gunsmiths. We have a Marriott style of double action, which means we have a hammer nose, which is lifted up by the back of the trigger. Single action though, is done by a Tranter style of sear. So this sear right here is holding the hammer until the trigger tips it in order to fall. Boom. Otherwise we have, let's see, our main spring is a V. We have a secondary spring for the sear and yet another spring just for powering the trigger. And oh boy, another flat spring for powering the hand. So a fairly complicated action. It has a manual rebound point, which is actually right here. Let me just click, there she is. That's the manual rebound, which allows us to load and unload the gun, keeping the firing pin off of whatever may be in or going out of this particular cylinder. If we look at the structure of this piece, there is one thing that Nagant patented in here that's wholly original, which is actually the trigger guard assembly. It has a hinge point here and a screw there, which means that we can unscrew it, lower it down, and it will take tension off of this spring, this spring, and this spring all at once. And we can use it as a lever for retensioning them when we put the gun back together. That will stick around. Let's take a look. The 1895 Russian model uses the same compression system. Great, but it only has to do it for one spring, one combination V-spring that does a lot of work. So obviously it's powering the hammer forward. It's also powering the trigger back forward because it pokes down on in there. And as it pokes down on in there, it hits a biased cut on the pin for the hand and also pushes the hand forward. So this has replaced one, two springs just in this segment. Now. We no longer have the sear, so it doesn't need any spring tension because we've gone for a full Marriott system, which means we pull the trigger in order to tip back the hammer for double action, which I don't want to let get out of control because this can overcam. And for single action, we have a little lip and a little lip and they interact between the two, which I have to kind of guide carefully again while this gun's apart and click. There we go, the two have met, and so long as they're kissing, we're good, and then when we separate them, it all comes crashing down. So completely different mechanism for single action, same for double action, very improved spring utility system. The rest of this gets a little bit complicated to see, so I'm gonna have to take a few parts out. Having really stripped the system, no mainspring, no cylinder, nothing to get in our way, let's look at that again. We pull the trigger, it slips past on the hammer, the hammer goes boom, ignore all the fancy stuff, just watch the hammer for a second as the trigger is returned forward by spring pressure. See that pop back? That's being caused by a part that's very hard to see in here, so let me get this out of the way. It's just a little tip here, an extension off the rear of the trigger that's actually pressing down inside this channel inside the hammer, making sure that it gets popped backwards every time, automatic rebound. Now, there's a lot of other things going on, but this is just the gas seal system added on top of it. It's the icing on the cake. At its heart, this is already a very different revolver from the original 78. It uses a different uh, single action mechanism and it uses an automatic rebound. Then on top of that, it has this uh, interlocking system that allows 
uh, this piece to come out for the breech face and it's putting some forward pressure down here on the cylinder and it's holding this whole thing forward against spring tension. Yeah, that's the gas seal. But this gun is distinctly different even at its core from its uh, much older sibling. Now, of course, there are several evolutionary steps between this and this that we did not get to cover today, but you can see most of them in our Belgian Naga episode. And those that you can't find there, well, we'll be exploring soon enough. Have a good one.